Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How's everybody doing? It's great to see you tonight. It's, uh, it's our third and final night of the parish mission, and I'm excited to be here. If you were here uh, over one of the previous nights, make some noise. There you go. That sounds like a lot of you, and if there's anybody else who is, who is brand new, welcome to, to tonight. We're so delighted that you came out uh, with God. We've already been receiving so much in these days, and with God, there is always more. Amen? Amen. There, the, he says in, in Scripture that the Lord does not ration the Holy Spirit. We're not limited to certain little bits of the Holy Spirit. There is more and more and more. And, but we're so blessed to have Father Matthias with us uh, tonight for this final night to lead us into that. Uh, but as we've been doing, we're going to begin the night with worship. And so just in case anybody's not familiar, worship is just this wonderful way to pray in song. And you're going to notice some people singing with arms raised high. Scripture talks about that as well. Lift your hands up to the Lord. And I just want you to relax, be free, and, and enter into this worship just like children. That was the theme of night one that we're sons and daughters coming before our Father. And so let's not be orphans or slaves, but children uh, free, delighting in our God as we worship him. Amen? Amen? So on your feet, and let's give glory to God.
Yes, Father, you are here. Father, we know you are here amongst us. We know you have been with us these past two days. Father, we know that you have even greater things planned for us tonight. Father, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. We give you full permission to, to bring miraculous things here tonight, to rip the roof off this place and let this be a new upper room, a new Pentecost. Father, we invite you. Jesus, we invite you, Holy Spirit, we invite you to be here in the fullness of your presence, in the fullness of your power. Can we open ourselves to you, Father, your sons and your daughters ready to hear your voice. Amen. Amen. So I invite you guys to have a quick seat here. So uh, for those of you uh, whom I haven't met yet, my name is Dan. I'm the uh, seminary intern here at St. Benedict Parish. So uh, here we are. We're on uh, the last night of our parish mission. Um, and it's been just a, a really amazing past couple of days, really powerful. Um, it's just been, it's been a great experience. And uh, I know for myself, I, I've... I've been really getting smoked by what the Lord has been saying through Father Matthias. Like, I, I just really feel like the Lord is speaking to me. And on the first night, I found myself praying, you know, Father, thank you for inspiring me to sit at the back of the church so nobody sees me getting wrecked. Because, man, <laughs> after that first night, you know, the tears were flowing, and I'm like, oh, praise God, I'm sitting in the back and no one is seeing this. Right? But, but in all seriousness, just really sensing the Lord... Uh, speaking directly to my heart, and, and I know many of us can say the same thing, right? Many of us can say the same thing. So, Father Matthias, we want to say, you know, thank you for being with us. Um, the Lord is truly at work in you, and uh, it's been a real blessing for us to, to hear God speak to us through you. So thank you. Thank you. So as we spoke about uh, the past two nights, um, you'll see in front of you in your pews uh, an envelope. Now it's customary during our, our parish mission uh, for us to take up a collection on uh, the last day of the mission. And that's to, uh, to support uh, the mission, but also to support our speaker and his particular ministry. Um, and so uh, I just want to quickly outline for us the different ways uh, we have to give here at St. Benedict Parish. So, of course, the envelope in front of you, uh, you can put cash in there, you can put a check in there, and in a moment we'll be uh, circulating a basket for you to put the envelope inside. Now, if you're a millennial like me and you have no idea how to fill out a check, uh, we also have ways to give electronically. So if you go to stbenedict.ca slash give, uh, you can give by e-transfer or by credit card, and all the information is on there. So for our friends following on the live stream, if you feel prompted to give, uh, go check out our, our website. Um, but before we do that, I just want to share a quick word. Now, certainly when you, whenever we have a parish mission or, or any kind of church event, there are costs involved, right? And so, uh, practically speaking, we take up a collection to offset these costs. But, but I want to put that reality off to the side for a second, okay? This moment right here is, is not just that, that awkward moment where we, where we ask you for your money. It's not just a, a commercial break from all the spiritual stuff, right? This is not just about putting money into a collection basket. You see, as, as people of faith, the, the act of giving is a physical expression of a spiritual reality, right? a spiritual experience. And so what we're about to do in a few moments here is all about receiving the invitation of the Father, who's inviting us to two things, okay? The Father is inviting us to respond in gratitude. We, we read in Deuteronomy, it says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord, which he has given you. So, so if the Father has done something in you and for you, especially in these past few days, right now is an opportunity to respond in gratitude to our Father who loves us. Gratitude for, for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. And our Father is also inviting us to invest in the kingdom. What, what do we say when we pray the words that Jesus taught us, the Our Father? We say, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So right now is an opportunity 
to invest in that kingdom that we so fervently pray for. Particularly as it's being built up through Father Matthias and the ministry he founded, Encounter Ministries, which, which exists to, to equip Catholics to walk in the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. And, and I've seen it for myself during my time in Michigan. I've seen people coming to Jesus through that ministry in, in miraculous and powerful ways. So I know the Lord is at work there. So when we give tonight, what we're doing is we're investing in conversions. We're investing in transformed lives. We're investing in the work of the Holy Spirit for a, a renewed church, a renewed world. And I, I think it's important for us to, to remember that this is, is much, much deeper and more significant than just putting money into a collection. This is a spiritual reality we're about to partake in. And so um, our music team is going to lead us through a meditation song. Um, our team is going to come around with uh, the baskets, um, and they'll, they'll be passing it around. And as they do so, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, and I want us to, to engage in dialogue with our Heavenly Father. Engage in dialogue with our Heavenly Father, because giving is meant to be a spiritual interaction with our Father who provides for us. And I want us to prayerfully ask our Father two questions. First, Father, how are you calling me to respond in gratitude? How are you calling me to respond in gratitude? And second, Father, how are you calling me to invest in your kingdom here on earth? How are you calling me to invest in your kingdom here on earth? And then pay attention to what the Father speaks to you. And then respond with a generous heart. Say the words and I will listen. Show your way, impart your wisdom. Open up my ears to hear. Open up my ears to hear. Speak now, Jesus. Speak into my heart. I am desperate to hear your still small I need to hear your voice. The noise of life is overwhelming, drowning out the truth that I need. Open up my ears to Open up my ears to hear, oh, speak now, Jesus, speak into my heart, I am desperate to hear your still small voice, I need to
Thank you so much for your incredible generosity. I uh, appreciate all of your giving. And it is, as I love how Dan put that. In fact, I'm going to get Dan to preach every Sunday right before we take up the collection. <laughs> well, it's been an amazing few days, I have to say. And, and Father Matthias, you in a short time have really become a brother. We, I've known this name. Father Matthias, uh, for some time through all the Detroit connections, but I think we met officially in August when he came to speak to my community, the Companions of the Cross, at our retreat days together. And then in, at the end of January, I was in Michigan, so I did a side trip to visit him in his home parish uh, in, in uh, Brighton, Michigan, St. Patrick's. And uh, thankfully, he didn't put me to work. I just got to be up there to con celebrate at Mass, window dressing and stuff, and... and uh, <laughs> You know. Anyways, uh, it's great that you came here to, to serve us and minister to us, brother. And uh, right away, uh, he, I knew he was a real brother because he started making fun of me. And, <laughs> and of course, I returned the favor, and, or I maybe initiated, I'm not sure. But uh, he first landed, and he was like, I was going to drive him straight to his hotel <laughs> so he could get some rest. And he's like, you know, Father Simon, I'm kind of hungry. So I thought, you know what? A taste of Nova Scotia. I'll take him to Burger King. <laughs> just, just so you know, it's not my inability to host. That was his request. Uh, isn't that true, Father? It yeah. is true. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and it was 10.30 at night. It was 10.30 Nothing at night. Nothing else yeah. is open. And so uh, then the other day, we were gathered together at a staff retreat. In fact, St. Benedict and Divine Renovation is a beautiful occasion to be together, to pray together, take some time apart, and Father Matthias led us through that. And he noticed something during Mass, uh, something about the socks. And I wonder if we have a picture here of some of our clergy socks. <laughs> so we have uh, four clergy represented here, uh, myself and Father Matthias, Father Alex, Deacon David, and uh, I don't, do you guys have Sesame Street in America? Um. You know, which of these four is not like the other? Can you guess? Can you get, we got some Canadian clergy up here represented and one American. Can you guess who is the uh, outlier? And so as a little thank you for all that you've done, uh, we've got uh, a little gift for you. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's more. <laughs> Do you want me to hold it? <laughs> there you go. There's a few other things. We got a tartan scarf and there's all kinds of goodies. There you go. Here you can wear that. That'll help you. There's a really great uh, bathroom reader here. Have you read that one yet? <laughs> Divine Renovation Apprentice. So, 
I hear really bad things about this author. <laughs> That's joking. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I can feel even Canadian when I get home. <laughs> so you remember to pray for us every time you see the beavers and the moose and the... That's not a beaver, that's a <laughs> sloth. <laughs> it like represents Canadian clergy. <laughs> Can you zoom in on this? <laughs> yeah, when is your return flight again? <laughs> all right, in all seriousness, it's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to recover from that one. <laughs> you have bested me, my friend. Dude. Uh, in all seriousness, I, I kind of had a sneaky suspicion that this mission was going to be off the hook. And, uh, and has it been... Incredible, yeah. Amen. <laughs> now, I'll tell you the reason why. The reason is that in the last week, last couple weeks, and even in the last few days, there's been a lot of what we would call spiritual attack. So different ways in which the enemy, who is very real, make no mistake, the enemy is real, and he just likes to interfere with things uh, in different ways. Sometimes with technology, we've had some weird things happening with, with our tech stuff, our microphones. Uh, somehow in our, in our calendar, all of the masses, all of the Sunday masses got deleted from now until when Jesus returns. <laughs> Which at first I was kind of annoyed by, and then I told Father Alex, well, we got our Sundays off, this is great. Things like that, things like relationships that are normally close, there's division. There's unexpected un, uh, strife, you know, in relationships. You ever experienced stuff like that? Sometimes, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it's because of old Sparky who is at work behind the scenes trying to interfere. And one of the things that I've learned in the spiritual life, and I think you will agree, Father, is that where the enemy is trying to interfere, it's often because God is about to do a major work. And I had this, this sense uh, in prayer when I was praying with my brothers last week uh, that where there is spiritual attack from the enemy, just like that principle where there is sin, uh, grace abounds, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more, where there is spiritual attack, Jesus makes an attack on the enemy of darkness all the more. Amen? Amen. And I think you're not sure about that one. He is making an attack. He is taking ground for the kingdom. He's taking ground in our own hearts uh, in these days. And, uh, and he's setting up a new, a new normal for us of what's possible. He's, how many people here feel like their faith has been increased in these days? Amen. Just earlier today, Father, I haven't even told you this. But I was praying with somebody, and, and I just felt a greater prompting, a greater boldness to, to not just pray a simple prayer, but to, to, to stop and ask God for a prophetic word. And there was this image that came to me, and I shared it with the person, and, and they confirmed it, and it was just really beautiful. It was really powerful, and so my own faith has amen. increased in Thank these you. days. Thank you. So let's, amen. 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 So I just want to pray over you and, Absolutely. Uh, and let the Lord work through you. Amen. Why don't we extend our hands to pray for more of the Spirit here. Come, Holy Spirit. Come right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and descend. Fall afresh, Spirit of God. Stir up your presence. Already within Father Matthias, you are at work in this man. Lord, you are taking ground for the kingdom, for the kingdom of God through the ministry of Father Matthias, and we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray against any attack from the enemy, any attack right now where he is trying to interfere with us here in this church, in Jesus' name, I claim this church for Jesus Christ. And I command any enemy of darkness to be bound, to leave in Jesus' name. We are under the safeguard of Jesus Christ. 
And we pray that this night, as he speaks through Father Matthias, as he reveals more of the Father's heart to us, as the Holy Spirit descends, that we would be ever ready to receive what God has for us. Thank you. And Blessed Mother, we turn to you as well. You who are a tender mother and a warrior, and we ask for your intercession for us, your protective care over us as we pray. Hail Mary, full All of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thanks, brother. Hey, bro. So tonight I have a couple door prizes. <laughs> I can't wait to see what my parishioners think about that. <laughs> Especially when I'm hearing confessions, I'll like kick my leg out and make sure they can see it. So what was Jesus saying to you? <laughs> Clearly that's why they wear them. <laughs> It's so good to be here. It's so good. Um, just a couple, couple things. I think I have about three hours. Is that right? All right. Are you guys up for that? <laughs> um, so, turn to your neighbor and say, "You are loved." And one more time, turn to your neighbor and say, the Father delights in you. And now I want you to close your eyes. Acknowledge his presence, your loving Father gazing upon you. And I want you to just say this prayer to him. Thank you for delighting in me. All right, well, praise God, praise God. So just encouragement, some of the, the ways in which we ended night one and night two were through these basic prayer exercises. I mean, you can maybe look up the video of how we did that, but just basic prayer where we present ourselves, we posture ourselves with the Father who loves us. And we, we simply enter into that relationship in a new way. And sometimes it might be difficult as you're walking with God to kind of, to sometimes get connected, but you always can pause and connect with your Father. You always can pause and connect with Jesus and, and ask him how he's loving you and just become aware of how he's loving you. And, and in many ways, that's the secret of the interior life. It's constant connection. One of the biggest dangers of being a Christian is that sometimes we think we can think our way out of our sadness. We can think our way out of our depression, think our way out of our anxiety. We just th keep thinking and thinking and thinking. Well, I can tell you what, thinking is not praying. Right? Thinking often is a self-referential thing. I'm just kind of thinking. What God wants is, is children to remember who he is and us come to him on a regular basis, to come to him out of, our, out of a great humility, out of a great poverty, and to say, Father, I need you. Father, tell me who I am again. How are you loving me right now? To really be honest with him and with yourself as to where you are. Because remember what the father says to the older son. He says, everything I have is yours. Everything I have. Everything that Jesus has is yours. The intimacy with the father the, way, the ability to pray and to hear his voice, right? The joy and the love of the Father, that belongs to Jesus. And because you are in Jesus, it belongs to you. This is really the inheritance that we have as Christians, right? Jesus Christ is not dead. He's alive. 
Let me repeat that. Jesus Christ is not dead. He is alive. Death has no power over Jesus. That means death has no power over you. You have been given power over death because of God's love for you, because he delights in you, because of what he has done for you. And you don't have to earn that. All you have to do is to accept it. Isn't this, this is the gospel. And, and, and when we come to understand this, then we come to understand how it is that God speaks to us as we become known and loved by him, then we have the capacity to bring his love and his knowledge to everyone else. And that's why we care so much about prophetic ministry. God speaking his message of love to other people. So remember what a prophet is. What is a prophet? A prophet is one who speaks God's message, a message inspired by God, right? And we do this for what reason? What does the prophet do? He speaks so that people might be built up, encouraged, and consoled. Everyone repeat after me. A prophet speaks to build up, to encourage, to console. Why? Out of love. All of those things are acts of love. And God has called us to be a prophetic people in the new covenant to be constantly guided by, inspired by, vivified by, and animated by the spirit of the living God so that he can produce in us and in our neighbor the very image of Jesus. This isn't rocket science. It's all about love. And we have a tendency to complicate love. And so I just want to start this evening with sharing a few stories about how prophecy has changed my life. You know, I give all these small stories of how God has, has used me and used other people to change other people's life. But prophecy has changed my life and has changed the lives of those around me in a very particular way. And this, isn't, um, this isn't just something about people far away. I heard once there was a guy who had this word. Like, this stuff has really impacted me. There's one time, I, I'll be just, let me just encourage you, there's a, there's a priest friend that I, I, we talk almost every single week, and we always pray for each other every single week. We ask the Lord, Lord, what's on your heart for him? What's on your heart for my brother? And we pray very similarly like we did at the end of last night. We say, Lord, what's on your heart? And we, we, we tap into God's love, and, and oftentimes he'll give us an image or a word or a sense, and then we discern it and we offer it to the other person. And I can't tell you how many times I have needed exactly what I have received. Like this, this priest friend will call me and say, hey, this is the image I got for you. This is the word I got for you. This is the sense I got for you. It's like, that's the exact thing that I need. And there are times that I've done that for him, and it's blown me away more than him. And one of the stories is actually kind of funny. I had this image, I'm praying for him, this image of him about to put his hand inside of a beehive. All right? How many times does that come to you in prayer? <laughs> it's like every day for me. No, I'm just joking. So I was like, that's very odd. And it, immediately I would say, well, that can't be God because that's not pious enough. I mean, well, I mean, I'll tell you a different story too. Like, there's a lot of stories I can tell. But like, we can prejudge what we're receiving without actually engaging God in dialogue, right? And so I, I'm praying like, well, what does that mean? And the Lord says, be careful where you put your hand. Be careful where you put your hand. I love you. So I call him up and I tell him that, and he, <laughs> he was completely blown away. There was a particular situation at his parish that he wanted to address and wanted to deal with, and there were some people that were very angry at his parish, and he was going to walk into that place and say, this is really what needs to happen. He was going to address it very directly and very, um, just very, very directly and just kind of walk right into this. And one of his priest friends says, be very careful. Do not put your hand into that beehive. And he was debating on whether he would do it. And then I received this thing about a beehive, like be careful where you put your hand. And it was an absolute confirmation of what his friend said. Now there's no way you can make that up, Right? But sometimes God speaks to us in images that don't make any sense to the person giving them. I remember one time praying with a guy who was, uh, I, I saw him in an in a ice cream shop. 
No joke. This is just kind of strange. I'm like, I don't know if this is God. Maybe I'm just hungry, you know? <laughs> so I see him in an ice cream shop, and he's looking at the ice cream, and, and I just have a sense of, and I said, Lord, what does this mean? And he says, tell him that I want to eat ice cream with him. And, like, and it was the father speaking. The father, and I just said, I just see you in an ice cream shop, and, and, and the father just wants to say, he wants to eat ice cream with you. Like he wants to enjoy this ice cream with you or something like that. And he looks at me and he says, that is crazy. Just a couple days ago, I was in an ice cream shop and I really wanted some ice cream, but I thought that the father wouldn't be pleased if I had it, so I didn't have it. I turned away from it because I thought God would be displeased with me if I had ice cream. And you're saying something there's no way you could have known. I had that dialogue. And he just was so encouraged that God wanted to eat ice cream with him, that God cares about us on that level. And sometimes I've actually asked God if I can have a Whopper. <laughs> and he eats Whoppers with me. It's crazy. <laughs> so God knows these things, right? It's very, very beautiful and very powerful. Um, I, could, I have a bunch of stories here. Um, I'll just share a couple more. Um, there was a, a time in our priest fraternity where one priest was struggling a lot with his particular vocation. Not like leaving the priesthood, but he was having a very difficult time. He was very discouraged about what was happening in his ministry. And um, I remember him like, having just a very difficult time. And one of the brother priests had an image of him writing down things in his journal. And then the brother says, and God says, this, this, and this which was a direct contradiction of what he, I'm sorry, direct answer of what he was writing about in his journal, which answered it point by point, where the priest just began to sob. He just began to sob. He's like, that's exactly what I was writing about in my journal. There's no way you could have known that. He began to sob and began to open his heart to the reality of what God was saying to him. And it changed the trajectory of the way he saw his own priestly ministry. It was that powerful. But man, remember what I was saying before, that priest never would have been built up if the other priest would have failed to share it. It's like, I don't know, this is probably not of God. This is just kind of random. Part of what, I, what I'm saying is that if it's not of God, it's not of God. But what if it is? Right, I want to talk a little bit about discerning. And it's a very important thing. Recently, when I was in my ministry, I was really struggling with something, and a, a priest said to me, this is what I sense God saying to me, and something lifted from me, a, a discouraging kind of spirit lifted from me when he said this, this point. It was extremely powerful. Like, I don't even know how, what it's like to have a priesthood in which I'm not constantly built up by my brother priests. There are people in this church who are trying to live their Christian life by themselves, and need the constant encouragement and being built up in consolation of the Spirit. Especially where there's darkness, where there's evil that you're grappling with. So much of our spiritual life is a battle of the mind, a battle of truth. What, would it, what it is that we believe that is true, what it is that we believe that is false. And if we're not opening ourselves up to how God wants to speak to us, whether it's, whether it's in our own prayer or in our corporate prayer or praying with our brothers and sisters, sometimes we find ourselves as sitting ducks to what, God, what the enemy wants to do. And so we're stronger together. As I said before, God desires to build the body up through the body, right? That's how he organized the body of Christ. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And then applies to us as Christians to really be pressing into God's heart to receive from God. Just the other day, I received this, this um, I received something from one of my brother priests that was, uh, that was really remarkable. He, he said, excuse me, I just, this is from a brother priest about a word that I gave to him in priest fraternity. He said, during a fraternity, during a fraternity on Sunday, you gave me a word. You saw me climbing up a sheer cliff. It was dark and rainy and the cliff was slippery. And I as I climbed rocks, I'm sorry, and as I climbed, rocks were falling above and hitting me in the head. And you saw me holding on with one hand and told me, the Lord says your grip is strong. You won't lose your grip. I remember this very, very clear. It was a very vivid image I got. I just saw him. He was getting hit with the rocks and he was holding on. 
And, it, and the Lord says, your grip is strong, you won't lose your grip. And he writes, this seemed odd to me, since I was having a great day. It was Sunday afternoon, I had, a, I had a great week in the parish and was ready to enjoy the day off on Monday. Three days later, on Wednesday, I was hit with a bunch of things all at once. I had to meet with the family in preparation for a funeral for someone who had taken his own life. At the same time, I had a lot of people anxious and worried, needing to talk, talk to me about concerns. We had received bad financial news, and there were some other issues that were really upsetting people. Then I was told of a challenging family dynamic with the family that I had to meet with. This brought me even, brought even more heaviness to an already difficult funeral preparation meeting. I decided that I had to leave the office and go and pray in the rectory chapel. As I was lying prostrate before the Blessed Sacrament in my chapel at home, I was telling the Lord something like, I can't do this. Then I thought, am I going to be okay? I thought how unusual that was, that, that was coming out of my mouth. He's done this, he said, he said, I've done this sort of funeral before, and I've never wondered if I was gonna be okay. And then the way he describes to me this story in, in person, he was telling me this story and I asked him to write it up. He was on his face, just like, am I gonna be okay? Am I gonna, am I gonna be okay as a priest? He's having a very critical moment in, in his life at this point. And then he said, he told the Lord, Lord, I think I'm losing my grip. And as soon as the word grip left my mouth, I remembered. God had already foreseen this and knew that I would be here. And that gave me the ability to go back to the office with utter confidence that God would fill with everything his power that I would do and say and direct me. When I met with the family, it was a very spirit-filled meeting. They were loved in a way that they hadn't been by the church. I was honest and real about the gospel and the need for repentance and love and the mercy of Jesus. And they were very blessed by this. And, and that set the stage for the best and most grace-filled homily the Holy Spirit has ever blessed me to preach. So here's a, here's a priest who was at a low level, and a word that was spoken had the power to revivify him in that moment. And that word maybe didn't make sense to him before. But we see this over and over again for people who take seriously that God speaks to us through each other the capacity to live on a whole different level. And this is ultimately what I'm proposing for each of you. That as we, as we take seriously our identity, that we are God's beloved, that everything that he has given to Jesus belongs to us, as a body and individually, it's precisely then that we can have access to hearing his voice for each other. And so tonight I want to be very practical about this. Um, I want to just walk you through. How many people, by the way, um, this is your first night? Your first night. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I can't recap everything I talked about the first two nights. Um, I'm kind of building on that. So if you feel lost, it's Father Simon's fault. <laughs> he refused to buy me Whoppers later. I don't know why, so... So very, very, I'm going to be very practical. Okay, so the prophetic word usually has three parts. Three parts. First, it's the raw revelation. Yesterday I talked about all the different ways that God speaks. Remember? Some of them were seeing, hearing, thinking, smelling. That was one of them. <laughs> yeah. So there's a whole bunch of ways, right? So we, and we activated some of those. Remember I had you close your eyes and you saw this beautiful beach? Like 90% of you saw that. And then I had you close your eyes and then you said your first, middle, and last name. Like 100% were able to hear that in your mind. And I said that God speaks to you through you and those are the ways in which he often speaks, right? Sometimes you just have thoughts that come to your mind. There are different ways in which we, I was just kind of showing you how, how God likes to use the, the faculties that he's given to you to speak to you, right? And, and how that's very important. Well, that's the first part of the prophecy, right? The first part of the prophetic word. It's the raw revelation. It's the image. It's the word. It's the thought. It's the sense. It's the feeling. Those are the things that is, that is what is revealed. The second part is the interpretation, right? So the first is the revelation. The second is the interpretation. That is, God, what do you want this person to know? What's on your heart here? What, what does this mean? What does this image mean? What does this word mean? What, is this, what does this sense mean? 
And the third part is application. What do you want them to do, right? You can think about it this way. So revelation, interpretation, application. You see this actually in Jesus' teaching. I don't have time to get into this, but divine revelation is parabolic in nature. They often come just like the parables, right? There's, there's the revelation of the parable, then there's the interpretation of the parable, and then there's the application of the parable. And because they come in a parabolic nature, they're extremely rich and have all sorts of different facets and angles to them. But because of that, we can enter into them very deeply. And images and words can mean so much so quickly because of the structure of how God often speaks. Another way you can look at it is the revelation is God's knowledge, the interpretation is God's heart, and the application is God's wisdom. So for all you theologians out there, I think that's another good way of looking at it, right? God's knowledge, God's heart, and God's wisdom. So those are the three things. And so when you're getting a sense from God, you're getting an image or a word, you're thinking, that's the first part, right? And so what we need to do is begin to dialogue with God about what that means and then dialogue with God about what you sense that God wants that person to do. And sometimes you're going to receive all of that. Sometimes you're only going to receive the image. Like, I don't understand what this means. I'm just getting this. And sometimes that's all that is necessary. Sometimes you'll get a God's, you know, you get the first two and you won't get the third. All right? So the, the important part is to remember that we just connect to God's heart. And this is the most important thing that I'm going to say tonight. All of the gifts are, are means or tools of love. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are tools of love. If you do not have love, they're absolutely useless. Turn to your neighbor and say, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are useless without love. <laughs> All right. Here's why this is important. If that's true, if the, if the gifts of the Spirit are kind of high-tech tools of love that the Holy Spirit equips us with, which they are, the more that you come to agreement with God's love, the more powerful the gifts can be through you. Put it another way, if you're praying for someone for healing and you do not love them, don't expect God to do much. Right? Why? Because healing is, a, is an expression of love. God wants to use you. He wants to come through you in love. Now, you might not have love and God will heal them anyway, right? Because sometimes he just wants to, he'll just go through you. If you have a preacher, for example, who doesn't love his congregation, God can still th speak to that preacher, but it's not going to be as effective and it's not going to be as, as fruitful, right? So it's not to say that God can't inspire you if you have imperfect love. I'm not saying you have to have perfect love because it's all about his love, we just want to be completely open. And if, if we don't have love, for example, and we want people to get wet in the Holy Spirit, we're like putting a kink in our hose, right? Maybe a little dripple, drips will come out, and maybe once in a while it'll squirt a little bit, right? But if we really want to be avenues of God's life and grace in this world, we need to make sure that we are flowing with love. We're loving the person in front of us, right? Does that analogy make sense? We just really, really need to make sure that we are loving. And that's, that's one, of the, one of the most important things. And I found that when, when you have someone, something against someone, be very careful about praying with them. If you have unforgiveness toward or, or anger towards someone, be humble and say, you know, I, I'm, just not, I'm just not able to pray right now. Because what will happen is, is that often an unresolved anger, unresolved kind of difficulty with someone can actually become a filter through which you hear everything. And you can become harsh. You can become judgmental and critical. And, it, and, and if you're hearing things that are harsh, judgmental, or critical, or something that really tears someone down, you're probably not partnering with the Spirit of God. You're probably partnering with the enemy. So you have to know what's going on in your heart. So just make sure that when you're praying with someone, you don't have any unforgiveness toward them. And why, this is one of the reasons why I'll say at the end, when we go through the model, is that you choose to love the person in front of you. And you try to tap into God's heart for that person. 
And when you do that, then you're in a position to receive and hear God more clearly. So again, the, the, the primacy of love, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are all tools of love. Make love your aim and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially they may prophesy. Make love your aim. If you don't have love your aim, as St. Paul says, you, you gain nothing, nothing whatsoever. The next point I just really want to encourage you is that the prayer time, and this is something that um, can take some people a long time to learn. When you're praying with someone, it's not a time to talk. It's not a time for advice or counseling. When you're really wanting to pray with someone, I know you guys have had some prayer ministry training, you really want to make sure that you are engaging with the person to a point where they can receive, but you're listening to God. I know some people who, when they, when they pray with someone, they're really, it's really not about prayer at all. They're just talking, they're going on and on and on. Right? And they're saying, well, then you should read this book, and you should do this, and you should do this. And, and the, really, the person just wants to hear, just wants a sense from, from God. They need encouragement. Right? And then some people, and I don't know why, maybe this is just a, it's just a, it's a woman thing. There's a, there's the rubbing of the, there's the rubbing of the back. <laughs> Women rub the back of each other when they're praying. Right? Father Simon does that too. <laughs> no, I'm just being silly. I was just, I was trying to think of a different way of saying it. But sometimes people are so compassionate. When you're praying with someone, it can be distracting, right? So just remember, this is a time to prayer. You can place your hand on their back, right? You can, you can really just step into that and, and you can be there. But just make sure that you, you're, you're trying to help them receive as well. And that you're not making it about talking or conversation. But you're in a position of prayer, okay? And and again, if you rub someone's back, it's, it's not the end of the world. But I, I've actually, believe it or not, the reason why I say that is because people complain about it. In our school, people complain, like, will this person stop rubbing my back? I'm like, why are you telling me about it? I'm not rubbing your back. <laughs> Tell that person. Tell them to stop. It's weird. I think I've offended all the back rubbers here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But one of, the, one of the things, too, and I just have a few more points before we get into the model, but one of the things I found remarkably helpful, remember I talked about how if you don't expect God to speak, you won't position yourself to hear him speak? Remember I talked about, like, why faith matters, what we believe matters? If I don't have a conviction that God wants to speak to me for the, the hairdresser, like I had a really profound prophetic word for the person who cut my hair, it was awesome. But I, I just had a conviction that God wanted to speak to her through me. And so I listened. And he, lo and behold, he did. Not all the time, but he did, right? It's the same thing here. We have to have a conviction that when we pray, we step into his love. Maybe not all the time we're going to get a word, but a lot of the time you will. Because the person in front of you is often going through something that they just desperately need to hear from God for, about. Or maybe they're, they're, they're discerning something and what you say is going to confirm that. And so this is one of the reasons why we like to ask direct questions of God. I think some people are uncomfortable asking direct questions of God because they don't think they're going to get an answer. And I totally get that. There are some things you will not get an answer when you ask a direct question, and for a very good reason. He's doing something different in your heart. But I have found, for whatever reason, when I'm praying with people, that some of the direct questions positions me to receive an answer. Remember when I was having you, get, you pray last night? Father, how are you loving me right now? What did that question reveal? It revealed, one, a conviction that I am being loved right now. Right? I pray from a position of faith. I believe that even if I can't feel it, even if I can't, you know, sense it, he's loving me. So, Lord, how are you doing that? I want to know how are you doing that. I want to come... Because when you know how he's doing it, then you can come into agreement with it. You can allow him to do it even more. But the question itself was pretty direct. Lord, what do you think of me right now? Remember that exercise I had you do for someone that you love? What do you, how are you loving this person right now? Notice how the question is both a revelation of, of your belief of God wanting to speak with you, and it prepares you to receive the answer. It, it opens your heart to receive what God wants to say. So I found asking questions to be remarkably helpful. And some of my favorite questions are, you know, how do you want to encourage this person? 
How do you want to console them? How do you want to build them up? Right, very simple, because you know that's the purpose of prophecy. Right, that's what Paul himself says. Lord, what part of, your, of their life do you want to bless? Where are you most pleased with them? Where do you delight with them the most? Where do you want to heal? Right? I'm asking very specific questions. Um, what do you think of X? What do you think of this person? This is one of the most beautiful. When people find out what God thinks of them, they just, they just get melted. They just get melted. Like, oh my goodness, God thinks of me like that. It's crazy. Right? So you can ask questions, but what the questions do is they prompt you to receive an answer from a posture of faith. And if I'm walking into just praying with someone and I don't have any of these prompt questions and I'm not really engaging God, it can feel like you're walking into outer space and you feel like I have no idea what's going on. And you can feel lost. Just have a couple of these questions memorized. And my favorite, my favorite as a priest is when I'm hearing confessions, Lord, what's on your heart for this person? And sometimes I'll see things over there and sometimes I'll hear something. Sometimes I'll get a prompt. Just what's on your heart? Because I want to know what he, I want to know how he loves. I want to come into agreement with his love. That's what the priesthood's about. That's what the Christianity is about. That's what your discipleship's about. It's about his love. It's about becoming his love and bringing his love. So ask that question. What's on your heart for so-and-so? And I'm telling you what, when you hear an answer, when you get an image or a word or a thought or a feeling or a sense, you know what's going to happen? Not only are you going to love that person more in front of you, you'll begin to fall in love with how he loves. And then you'll want to love how he loves. And then you'll be changed. So, so as I tell people, if you want to be a hose and God is flowing all this stuff out of you, let me just tell you one thing. The inside of the hose gets wet. You get that? The inside of the hose gets wet. If you are a vessel of God's love and you're constantly allowing him to flow through you, you yourself is going, you're going to get some of that. Does that make sense? One of the biggest privileges of loving is the experience of being loved as you love. And this only happens in Christianity because that's who we believe God is. So in other words, the more that you love other people, the more that you are going to receive love. Sounds like Jesus, right? Giving yourself away as a gift. The only way to find yourself, right? So asking the direct questions. And then when you get the revelation, the two questions you want to ask, you get something like a revelation, a sense, a word, an image, or a thought, you know, or a feeling. You say, well, Lord, what does this mean? What does this mean? It's another question to ask. What does this mean? And finally, if you get a sense of what it means, what do you want them to do? And a lot of times, he just says, just rest. He just wants him, people to rest in him. Other times, I want you to do this. Now, I, I wouldn't worry too much about getting all these things 100% correct. Because you're not going to get 100% correct. And then this is, leads me to my next point. Like, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. The fear of making mistakes will actually prevent you from being successful. Imagine a little child learning how to talk for the first time. And then blah, 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 Simon, Lobo, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Ron Huntley, blah, 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 right? Right, so you have all these different things. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are wrong. Would you ever come up to a one or two year old, excuse me, your grammar is incorrect. Until you get your grammar correct, you shall not speak. <laughs> no one's going to do that. Right? Or if a kid is trying to walk and falls down every three, three attempts, you're not going to be like, you know what, don't try walking until you are perfect at walking. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Right? We have to not take ourselves so seriously. This is part of the issue with Christianity sometimes. We, we get so serious about, about doing it right, that seriousness causes us to always do it wrong. I always tell people that Christianity is less about trying harder than it is letting go and letting God love us, right? So it's a very similar thing. So when you start doing this on a regular basis, and I still will pray with people all the time. Hey, I got this image, you know, and, and I'm, I'm talking to them and like, well, does that make any sense to you? No. I'm like, okay. I must not have heard God on that one. But a lot of times, hey, there's this sense, people just start crying. Like, what's happening? Well, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Or that's exactly what Jesus told me. That's a confirmation of what he's saying. You're not going to always get it right. So just be patient with yourself and as you grow. And remember, 
Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, right? Remember, we said I'm a sheep is one of the activations. I'm a beloved sheep. Well, do sheep just pop out of sheep? Oh, no, they're little lambs first, right? They grow up, right? We, we have to, sometimes we're very, we're like little lambs, right? If we're little lambs, you know, um, we're going we're gonna to grow. We just need to be patient with ourselves. Um, but what that means is we need to not be afraid to step, step out and take a risk. A lot of this stuff isn't going to make any sense to you unless you start sharing what you believe God is sharing with you. How do I know if this is from God? How do I know if this is from God? And that's probably the question you guys are all thinking. How do I know if this is from God? How do I know? I said, part of it is you're never going to know until you share, Right? Because you'll always be wondering if this is from God. If you're waiting for 100%, like this has to, I know for sure that maybe this feeling that I get when I get this word has to be there, otherwise I'm not going to share, you're never going to share. And you're never going to know whether or not you were hearing from God. Part of the way that we teach people how to grow in the prophetic gifts of the Spirit is helping them recognize when they got it right, how did it come? What was that experience like? looking at interiorly how they're experiencing that. And then when they got it wrong, what was that like? So you begin to kind of measure, have this own internal rating system. Oh yeah, that came in a very similar way that this other one came. And then you become a lot more confident. Hey, there's a sense, I really believe this is a very strong, I believe this is from God. And you can step out with more confidence. But you have to start somewhere. And so I think in many ways, whether or not this type of gift is active in your life is directly proportional to how much risk that you undergo or how, much, how many risks you take in sharing and praying with other people. And I know the priest can testify to this. If you're praying with people on a regular basis and you're going for it, you'll be surprised at how much God does through you. But if you're, if you're going to kind of pull back and say, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, hey, I don't really want to make a mistake, then you're limiting the possibility of God doing something through you. And as I said the last couple nights, some people are going to have this on a heightened level. They're going to have this as a charism, right? Some people it's going to be just kind of a more of a, 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 a normal thing that God does in very small ways, but it's very encouraging. But let God make that decision. Don't preempt him by saying, well, that's not me, right? Because that, that is not, that's not faith. Let him decide. Finally, that last thing about discernment is very important. We teach that there's a 50-50 responsibility with regard to discerning the content of the word. 50% of the discernment is on the person praying. We need to take seriously, we don't just share everything that comes through our mind. That would be really silly, right? Because remember, there are, there are different sources of inspiration. Sometimes the enemy is trying to tempt us. He's trying to tempt the person through us, right? And sometimes it's just us. We just have these beautiful desires that maybe not from God, and it's not, it's not from him, but we have a responsibility of discerning. But it's not all on the person giving the word. Half of the, of the discernment is on the person receiving the word. When you're going through prayer ministry and someone says something to you that doesn't really hit your heart, it doesn't really apply to your life, what do you do? You say, I don't know if that was God. I mean, I'll, I'll pray about it, but I don't think that was God. Well, that person, that kind of, that person must have missed it. And you just kind of just... Reject it and move on, right? So we don't want anyone to think that what is being said is 100% from God, ever. That can be extremely dangerous. And I want to encourage you, and I said this to the Divine Renovation and the St. Benedict staff retreat, God is not interested in controlling you. He's not interested in speaking a word to control you or to manipulate you whatsoever. He always gives room for you to respond he invites you to respond, to accept or reject. If you get a word that makes it seem like you feel trapped and you have to do something and it causes a bunch of fear in you um, because you feel like he's calling you to do one thing versus another thing, probably isn't of God. Now, it's not to say that the enemy can't trap, make you feel like that when someone is delivering a word, but we just need to remember that there needs to be room for people to respond. If you're saying, thus says the Lord, you need to come to daily mass or else you will die. I'm okay. <laughs> First of all, God does not speak like that. Second of all, it's like th that whole condition thing, like, like there's, a, there's a way in which 
that can make someone feel like they don't, they don't have freedom anymore, right? Um, there's always an invitation. Um, <laughs> I should have thought about that before I said that. <laughs> All of you should be coming to daily mass. I'm just <laughs> so there's four different tests to know whether a word is authentic. That was just the, the verse is the truth test. If you're the one praying and you're the one receiving the truth test, is it is the word in accordance with sacred scripture? Is it in accordance with the teachings of the church? If you come up to me and say, you know, Father, I'm just getting this sense that God is saying there's supposed to be women priests, I'd be like, no, nope, sorry, it's not God, right? Or I have a sense that, you know, um, we're not supposed to have this, this, and this in our faith, or this doctrine is wrong. No, that's not of God. Sorry. You can, just com- you can just completely dismiss it, right? And there's a whole bunch of things that can come with regard to that. Um, but is it, is it true? Is it correspond with Scripture and church teaching? Number two is the love test. Is the person built up in love? If you're receiving prayer, are you built up in love? Right? Are you built up? Are you encouraged? Are you consoled? Does it, do, you, do you feel more secure? Do you, do you have a sense of God, God's presence with you? Right? Those are very important questions. If you're receiving a word and it feels like it's not loving at all, in fact, I feel like worse than I did before, then it's probably not from God, right? It's not to say that God isn't going to challenge you, but he challenges you in a way that you know it's true, right? You're convicted of it. Unless, of course, you're running from God. If you're running from God, everything that God says is going to sound bad because he's really, really trying to, to help you. The way that I, this is a a very important analogy too. So like, let's say you're running away from God into very, very big danger. You have a little kid. How many of you have had kids before? Okay. Father Simon, why is your hand up? (laughs) I have to milk every second of making fun of him. Um, No, I'm just joking. But no, let's let's say a little kid is starting to run toward the road, right? Right? You're starting to run toward the road, and, and you're like, no, no, don't do that. And you catch up to the person, you catch up to the kid, and say, please don't run to the road. And the kid just keeps running and running. And one time the kid's running, and you just start screaming, turn around, I told you not to do that. That voice may sound very intimidating to that child. But that voice is that way to save the child's life. If you have someone running away from God and you're speaking to them, they may feel like you're yelling at them. They may feel like God is yelling at them. But it's coming from a heart that is uh, from a father who does not want you to get killed. Does not want that person to get killed. Right, so if someone is running away from God, sometimes God's voice can seem a little bit more stern. But if you're, if you're facing him and you're, you're really trying to walk, it's like he's so encouraging, he's so loving. You guys know the distinction between that, right? If you're a loving parent, you might yell at, that, at, at your son or your grandson running into traffic. But it's not because you, you hate him, it's because you love him. You don't want him to get hurt, right? So just remember when you're praying with people, some people receive things, if they're running away from God, it, it, it might seem louder to them, and that's okay. That's not our responsibility. We just need to make sure that we speak in love. One of the things that's very important when we're, when we're doing um, this love test is making sure that we recognize how we speak it. How we speak is very important. If we receive a word that is filled with joy and life and, and, and just consolation, we speak in that same manner that we receive it. I mean, what, what, what would it be like if... You're praying with someone, and you just see the joy of God over someone. You see God dancing with them and just having this amazing thing, and you say, I see God. He's dancing. He loves you very much. Okay, how you say something matters, right? Like, if you, if you have a sense that God is compassionate, and you sense him speaking compassion to someone in his brokenness or woundedness, you speak with compassion, if you're someone with joy, you speak with joy. Or if it's like a, a peaceful thing, you speak in peace. You don't freak people out by saying very peaceful things in a very jittery, like, weird way. 
Like, you just be peaceful about it. So how we, how we speak matters. Are we built up in love? That's the love test. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the love test. Number three is the fruit test. Does it bear fruit? I can tell you when I'm prayed with, I will often go into prayer, have someone pray with me, and I feel like discouragement. I'll go into prayer discouraged. I feel like, like there's, a, there's a little bit of hopelessness there. There's, I just feel anxiety. I feel all these different things going on. And when I'm done, I just like the fruit of like, whoa, I have confidence that my father is with me. Oh, we, oh yeah, he took that burden from me. Oh, he spoke into this situation that I needed to hear about it. And there's already fruit. The fruit of the spirit is there, right? The fruit of the word later in life is there. God has words. God had words for us about encounter ministries, about what we're doing, and it's bearing fruit, right? So does that make sense? The fruit test, both the fruits of the Spirit and the fruit of conversion or fruit of other people coming to Christ or the fruit of greater love, right? And finally is the glory test. Does the person praying give all glory to God? Are they drawing everyone in their attention to the Father, to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or is he or she drawing attention to themselves? What's so strange sometimes is that people who are attracted to this type of thing can sometimes, after they get um, a lot of these things right, they can become so enamored with themselves as being vessels that they're like, hey, look at me. Look at how good I am. Look at how all the things that I'm doing. And it's all about them. When you're praying with someone, when it's all about them, it's pretty easy to tell but sometimes it's very subtle. So just, just watch and see whether or not glory is given to God, right? And when, when something amazing happens, I believe God, God's going to do amazing things with each other as you pray. It, it's going to be very filled with joy. You're going to be very like, thank you, Lord. This is, am- this is amazing. But there's going to be a temptation to think that it's really because of you. Remember, you're a beloved child. God's doing this through you. All glory to him. All glory to him. Truth test. What's the second one? Love test. Fruit test. And the glory test. All right. You ready? What are we getting ready for, Father? So uh, I'm going to stretch some of you. If you weren't here the first two nights, this might be so much of a stretch. I don't, you don't have to participate in this. But I want to have, have you pray with each other. I'm going to guide you through this. And I want you to pay attention to what God is saying. I'm going to guide you step by step. And I want you to, to really open your heart and you choose to love the person that you're going to pray with and just watch what God does. What I believe is going to happen is a lot of you are going to be built up. But what I believe is going to happen even more is that God is going to be glorified, that his children are confident enough in him to know that he desires to build up the fellow members of his body through them. This is going to glorify God, and it could potentially change the way that you minister and change, really, uh, your life and the life of others as you practice this. So, what I want you to do is that I want you to pair up with someone that you don't know. You guys can get up, it's fine. (laughs) Or maybe not, not, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Yep, and then, shh. If you can try to keep it to man and man and woman and woman, that would be great. I kind of put a little twist in there. All right.
All right, we're going to quiet down. <laughs> You should have introduced yourself. I want you to choose who's going to pray first. Just choose among yourself who the first person to pray is. All right? All right. If you're receiving prayer, if you're the one receiving, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to just focus on Jesus. If you're the one receiving, close your eyes and focus on Jesus. The important thing is, is not to pray for yourself. Remember, you're already loved. Just focus on Jesus. If you're the one receiving prayer, focus on Jesus. If you're the one praying, I want you to just ask if you can place your hand on their shoulder. Okay? I want you, if you're the one praying, just connect with God's love for the person. I won't even just say a prayer. If you're praying, re repeat after me. Jesus, Please give me your love for this person. Just allow your affections and your heart to just love the person in front of you, desiring the good, willing the good of the person in front of you. And I want you, as you're praying, just to focus on Jesus. And I want you just to ask Jesus this question. Jesus, what's on your heart for this person? You just ask it out loud. Jesus, what's on your heart for this person? And just pause. Just pay attention to what comes to your mind. get a word or an image or thoughts. I don't want to disengage God. Lord, what does this mean? And just pay attention to how he responds. As you're praying, you could also ask God, what do you want them to do? How do you want them to respond? ask a different question. Lord, how are you loving them right now? Remember not to judge too much about what comes to your mind, but just ask questions. Oftentimes it's the first or the second image or thought that comes that God wants you to pray with.
What I want you to do is I, I want you to share with the other person what you sense God is trying to say to them. And maybe even share what you received and what you think it means for them. And when you, when you share, you want to say, this is what I sense God saying, or this is, this is, um, this is what, I, um, what I think God is saying. This is what I see. Just share that with them. And as you speak, remember just to kind of try to build them up with whatever you believe God is saying. So go ahead and share that with them right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so I want to want to just kind of bring us back here a little bit. So, how many of you who received prayer experienced being built up, consoled, or encouraged? Raise your hand. <laughs> Look around. Remember, only half of you were receiving prayer. All right. Now, how many of you? who were receiving prayer were not just built up, consoled, or encouraged, but really were blown away by how accurate what they said was to your life. Look around. Isn't this amazing? Now, to put your hands down, how many of you who were praying and had someone just raised their hand thought that this was much easier than you thought it was going to be? <laughs> now you have no excuse. All right, so I want to, if anyone in particular had a very powerful word that was for them, that really just rocked them, and they just would love to testify, to just share with everyone else what just happened, I really want to encourage you to come forward. Remember, testimony releases the grace of faith. Does anyone want to come forward and share? I see people getting rocked. You know, you don't have to, but... Anyone want to come and share? You want to share? You were really rocked? Okay. What's your name? What? Care? Kara. Let's give it up for Kara. Okay. So, 
Okay, Kara, what was the word that someone had for you? A big red heart. Uh huh. And that big red heart was Jesus loving me. Uh huh. In spite of all the problems that I've been going through with my family. Uh huh. And I told her, my priest told me to let go and let God. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do, Father. Uh -huh. And so what did that word do for you? That word is going to help me. I, uh -huh. I'm going to let go. I'm going to let God. And that I do have a heart that Jesus is with me. Isn't that amazing? So here's the thing. I, what I absolutely love about this is that God speaks so individually to someone what you hear God say to someone else may not impact you very much, but when it's spoken to you in the now, in the very way that you needed to hear it, it completely blows you away. And that's why we just don't, we don't shoot blanks. We want to hear, on, hear God's heart. We're going we're gonna to switch now, okay? The person who is receiving is now being the one praying, okay? We're going to do this. I'll lead you through it again. Oh, thanks. Shh. Okay. Just ask them if you can place your hand on their shoulder. And if you're receiving prayer, just close your eyes. Just focus on Jesus. If you remember just to... Just, you don't have to strive for him to love you. Just allow him to gaze on you. If you're receiving prayer, just gaze on Jesus. If you're praying, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I choose to love this person. I ask for your love for this person. connect to his love for them. Allow his love to come through you. Choose to will their good. Desire their joy. Connect to that love. I want you to ask Jesus this question and just repeat this after me. Jesus, what's on your heart for this person? How are you loving them? How are you loving them? Pay attention to some of the first things that have come to your mind. Just pay attention to them. Thoughts, feelings, words, images. Just pray with them. Dialogue with God. What does this mean? And sometimes as you dialogue, he begins to show you more. He begins to expand what he wants to say. He gives you interpretation. What does this mean, Lord? Thank you, Lord. 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 Sometimes when you're receiving prayer, you might just have the sense of God's love for you, even before they even speak. Just rest in his love. There's no need to perform. And 
And if you're praying, Lord, what do you want this person to do? How do you want them to respond? I want you now to just simply share with the person. This is what I sense God saying. This is what I think the Lord is saying to you. And just, just kind of maybe share with them what you've received and what you think it means for their life, to build them up, to console them, to encourage them. Go ahead and share that right now. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. 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 Shh. Let's bring it to back together again. Shh. Shh. So if, if you were being prayed with, if you were being prayed with, and you were, you were really built up. Shh. If you're being prayed with and you were built up, right? You were encouraged or you were consoled. Raise your hand if you're being prayed with. Look around. It's so good. Now, how many of you who are being prayed with were blown away by how accurate and how powerful this was? Just raise your hand. Look around. This is from, I want to tell you what I see. I see many of you crying. Many of you are being touched by the power of God's Word because God's Word is powerful. It, we need it, right? So how many of you who were praying thought this was much easier than you thought it was going to be? Raise your hand. <laughs> now, this is, I really want to encourage that one more thing. If there's anyone here who was really touched by a word and was re this was just so big for you, you want to share that with everyone else. I just want to, so maybe one person give a testimony, just like we did last time. We got someone. 
All right, come on down. You're thinking of Price is Right, aren't you? I didn't say that. Who was praying with whom? First, first I prayed over her, and then she prayed over me. Yep, that's how it works. We <laughs> so, I'm sorry. So, what, what, who, who do you, what, do you, what, what, what part do you want to share? I'll share mine first. Okay. So, I, I, I have been a long time parishioner here. This lady just moved to Halifax four months ago. I've never met her before in my life. And this is going to be tough. When she started praying for me, she started praying for the children that I've lost. And I've had five miscarriages through my 35 years of marriage. And I have no children of my own. And it was exactly what she brought forward. How did that make you feel? Mm, weird. <laughs> <laughs> How does this lady know everything about me? <laughs> right? But did it, do you feel God's love for you, yes, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Very powerful. Amen. Okay. Do you want to share? She asked me if I would speak for her. Okay. Okay. Again, I've never met her before. Okay. So when I was praying over her, I got a sense that there was something with her kidney or bladder. Don't, still don't know why. And she has a cyst. And I got the message that she's going to be completely healed. Cyst where? Where is a cyst? Kidneys and bladder. And you have cysts on a kidney and bladder? It, around her kidneys and bladder. Wow. So she has the very thing on her kidney and her bladder, and that's what was revealed. It was a, a fibroid cyst. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's a word of knowledge, right? So when God, God often will reveal that, Specifically so you can press in and you can pray for her so that God can release his, his grace in that moment. Okay, these women have never met each other. You see how accurate that was? Let's give glory to God. Amen. Hey, you feel... They both feel known and loved by God. It's so amazing. It's so amazing what God wants to do. I, we could do this all night. We can give testimonies all night. Um, I know it's pretty late, so I just want to, I want to just thank you before I get off the, uh, the altar here. Thank you for being such a good um, parish. This has been so amazing to be here with all of you. I want to encourage you. I just want to really encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and as, as much as I, I make fun of him, you have a phenomenal pastor. A phenomenal pastor. The good man of God. Hey, Matthias. Uh, no, you're fine. Well, thank you so much, brother. Thank you for ministering to us and how many people feel like their faith has increased tonight? Amen. Amen. So this is just the beginning. We have to practice this. We have to keep doing it and keep looking for opportunities to love one another by praying with each other and listening for what God is trying to say to each other. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's, uh, let's close the night with uh, a time of worship because... Again, what are, what are those, those, those were great, um, those four testers, the truth test, we've already forgotten, I've forgotten, the love test, the truth test, the love test, the fruit test, and the glory test, and let's make sure that we give all the glory to God for what's happened. Thank you, Lord, we give you glory. Just right now, we're going to start speaking out prayers together, I invite you 
just if you are grateful to God, just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done in these days. Just speak your own words of thanks. Thank you, Lord, for increasing our faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending Father Matthias to us. Thank you, Lord, for his wonderful ministry. Thank you, Lord, for Encounter Ministries. Thank you for your prophetic word. Father, thank you that we are your children. Thank you that we are sons and daughters, that we don't have to be orphans or slaves, that you truly want to speak to us, that you can speak to us. Father, thank you that it's possible to hear your voice. Thank you for increasing our faith. Thank you for this great gift of love that we can minister to each other in this way. Take us deeper. Take us deeper now. Lord, as we go forth from here, let us have a great impact on our city, on our world. Father, we know that you want to do so much more than we could ever ask or imagine. And we say yes. We say yes to you. Father, we say yes to you. And all that is accomplished, all that you do, we want to return the glory right back to you. Praise you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, sing praise, let everything that breathes, let all the earth proclaim, great is the Lord our God, praise Him forever, let all that is within me magnify His name. Sound of heaven from every mountain top. 